that kind of introduction, I thought T.D. Jakes was about to come up here. So if you thought the same, I apologize in advance. But it is a blessing to be here this Sunday before you. This is my first time preaching virtually to our adult service. And so Inspiration Church, good morning. Welcome. Good morning and welcome. And so here we are on a 10-year anniversary for our Pastor Carlos, our senior pastor, our uh, lead pastor, our creative pastor, uh, the pastor that uh, gave me a calling um, or answered his calling so God can call me up. Uh, so 10 years in ministry for him, three years as Inspiration Church. And of course, before Inspiration Church, uh, we uh, we're doing church under another name, and, and it's, it's, it's brilliant if you've seen the camera pan around to uh, the musician playing this week on the keys, Trayson. And so Trayson started and began uh, with us in ministry, and so this is probably his first time seeing me preach, and he's probably as surprised as anybody to see me preach. In fact, when uh, Tony said, Pastor Chris, Trayson looked up and said, Pastor Chris. And I'm so glad he said that because that fits right into my message today. Um, so 10 years in ministry, three years as Inspiration Church, and 35 years of life this week, we celebrate Pastor Carlos's birthday. So if you're tuned in right now, I want you to go ahead and, and just type in happy birthday, Pastor Carlos. If you got his personal number, go ahead and text him. Yes, Sunday, you're a few days late, but go ahead and text him happy birthday, Pastor Carlos, because we are exceptional as a church because of the calling upon his life. And so thank you, Pastor Carlos, for, for your ministry. 35 years of life. Um, I serve uh, an awesome God and uh, a man that is younger than me. So if anybody ever told you I don't take direction well, they are wrong because I've served a young man here for the last six years. Um, and so if I could give you a message today, I hope to keep this short for you. And the reason why I want to keep it short, because some of y'all probably don't know this is our second time shooting this very shot. And I'd like to be very honest with you. Right now, uh, we have grown a little bit weary, but you can't see it. We've grown a little bit tired, and you can't see it. And if I could tell you what I named this message, you would think I was making this all up. And the name of this message is I'm Not Supposed to Be Here. And so some of us that have worked throughout the night that have labored here this evening are looking at their watches, and they are saying to themselves, I am not supposed to be here I'm not supposed to be here and so when I uh, thought about this message it came to mind and God put it on my spirit unlike any other most most messages I prepare for I read and and study and and da 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 da, -da. this is actually one of the first messages that God actually put on my heart and if you know me, I am a very emotional pastor. If you don't know me, you should know I'm an emotional pastor. So you will see me get emotional, and I will get emotional because when I think about people, it makes me emotional. When I think about what other people go through, I feel that pain. And when I practice this sermon, I get emotional when I practice the sermon. And I don't practice the tears. I don't practice the emotion. It is real. And so when I preach this message, I'm not supposed to be here. I think about a trip that I had, a trip I was driving uh, on a, a road trip to Austin. And on this road trip to Austin, I, I, I peered off to the side and I, I seen this big field. And this big field had a palm tree in the middle of it. And this field was, happened to be a ranch. So there was barbed wire around this, this ranch. There were cows on this ranch. There were horses, as you can imagine, on this ranch. There were uh, haystacks on this ranch. And so I couldn't help but wonder as I passed by and looked at that palm tree, why is that palm tree there? Because, see, when I think of a palm tree, and correct me, you guys can follow me. Tell me what you think of. Type below. What do you think of when you, when you think of a palm tree? 
And what I think of is, is the sandy beaches in, in the Florida Keys. I think of the Venice Beach in California. I think of the Seychelles Islands on the coast of Africa. I think of blue skies. I think of clear water. And I think of sandy beaches when I think of a palm tree. But here I am driving and I look into this field. And in this field, I see a palm tree, a palm tree that is encircled by a barbed wire fence, uh, surrounded by horses, surrounded by cows in the middle of a haystack and I could not help but think why is that palm tree there that palm tree in my mind is not supposed to be there it's not supposed to be there and so I want to open our scripture up this morning and I want to open it up with a very familiar story that we, are, we know all too well. It is the story of Jonah. Jonah, and we're going to open up from Jonah chapter 4. And we'll go from verse 9 to verse 11. And so the scripture reads, But God said to Jonah, It is right for you to be angry about the plant. Jonah said, It is, and I am angry, and I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant. Although you did not tend to it, it sprang up overnight and it can dry up overnight. Should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh in which there were more than 120,000 people? Let me get into that scripture just real quick. There is uh, a thought of suicide because uh, Jonah says, I wish I were dead. There is dealing with anger because Jonah said, because God said, I understand your anger. In fact, there is affirmation there because God says, I understand your anger. And most importantly, God concludes with the people, the people. And while many sermons around Jonah are concerned with this whale tale and how fascinating this whale tale is, this passage addresses Jonah's suicidal thoughts. This passage addresses Jonah's worry. This passage addresses God affirming Jonah's angry. And so quite, or uh, anger, excuse me, so quite literally, God tells Jonah, you are crying about a plant, but I am crying about my people. When I entered this, mi this ministry, it was for the people. And I understand that God's ministry is for the people. If I am here to feed myself, I am but a fatted calf. But if I am here to feed you, I am a celebrated chef. Come on, somebody. I'm just telling you that this message, this ministry is about the people. It is not about just myself. I focus on myself for my salvation, but I focus on you for the building of you, for the edifying of you. And this is what Jonah and God is in conversation about. And so God is telling Jonah, you are crying about a plant, but I am crying about my people. So the question now is, how did this, this plant get here? Why and how did this plant get here? While you were wishing you were not alive and saying, I'm not supposed to be here, God said, I put this plant here and it wasn't supposed to be here. I put you here. Listen to me. You were not supposed to be here. You know, neither one of you are here, the plant or you, Jonah, without me, God in your life. Sometimes like Jonah, we can define our existence by our circumstances. And that's a troubling place to be to define your predicament or define who you are based on your circumstances. But you see, our circumstances are temporary. Who we are is forever. Our circumstances are temporary. Who we are are forever. In other words, when we hear the story of the hemorrhaging woman, she had a condition. She had a circumstance, but it was not her. What she wanted to do was come out of that circumstance. She didn't want to stay in that circumstance because she understood that's not who she was. So she had to come out of that. So she touched the hem of Jesus' garment so she could not be in that circumstance. But it did not change who she was. She was 
was faithful. She chased Jesus. And guess what? After that, she remained faithful and she continued to chase Jesus. See, your circumstance cannot define who you are. The pastor last week defined and and laid out uh, in his sermon that we should take care of our reputation. You have to take care of your reputation. You have to take care of who you are, who God called you to be. So despite Jonah's defiance, God is patient with Jonah. And it's important to see God's patience because normally when we see God in this older testament, we always define him as this ruthless God, this God that doesn't understand, the God that 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 uh rain down uh rain for 40 days and 40 nights and got rid of everyone but this here in this this passage we listen to, to god be very patient with jonah and jonah says i'm angry and he says it twice and god says i understand that you are angry so we are dealing with a very sympathizing god and so jonah looks at his situation and he assesses himself and he says i should not be here i'd rather not be here and how often do we look at our situations and we say we're not supposed to be here how many of us are in a situation right now whether we are dealing with sickness and we say to ourselves i'm not supposed to be here if we're dealing with unemployment we say we're not supposed to be here how many of us are in a a bad relationship whether it is verbally or physically abusive and we say to ourselves i'm not supposed to be here How often do we ask ourselves that? I had a friend that asked. He said, Delaney, you a preacher? Almost like Trace's response today. Pastor Chris? And when I assess the the reaction, sometimes it's, it's a reaction that says to me, you're not supposed to be preaching. Hmm. You're not supposed to be preaching. And when I look back on Everything that I've been through, when I look back on the coaxing of my mom to have an abortion with me, I know I'm not supposed to be here. When I look back on all the abuse that I have been through, I know I'm not supposed to be here. When I look back on the trauma, I know that I'm not supposed to be here. When I look back on my mishaps and my missteps, I know that I am not supposed to be here. So you need not tell me that I'm not supposed to be here because I know in fact that I am not supposed to be here. But look at us. Look at all of us. Premature babies. Cancer survivors. COVID survivors, there's people telling us that we're not supposed to be here. Look at us, drug addicts, people that were stricken to poverty but made it out. Look at us. They said we were not supposed to be here. Look at us, survivors of war, hurricanes, tsunamis. The world has told us that we're not supposed to be here. But the mere fact that God has planted us here is evidence that God is telling us we are supposed to be where we are at. He is saying that I have planted you here. So God remains unmoved by your circumstance. And he remains unmoved because he planted us here. In Genesis 50, 20, Joseph says, you intended harm to me. But God intended it for good. So when Joseph says this to his brothers, he is saying this to his brothers because they had sold him into slavery. They had gotten rid of him and they thought he was done for. But meanwhile, God was doing a work in Joseph. And Joseph was over there toiling in the king's castle. And by the time the the brothers had lost everything that they had had worked for, they found themselves at their brother's feet. But they did not recognize him because of his elevation. But when he told them I am your brother do you not recognize me they looked at him and they said you are not supposed to be here and I digress a little bit because I'm supposed to be talking about Jonah but that 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 part there was for our biblical scholars and so when I think about when people say Delaney you a preacher I have to reassess my evaluation of myself. And in doing so, I found that it is not that 
I am not supposed to be here. But I am not where many expected me to be. It's not that I'm not supposed to be here. It's that I'm not where many expected me to be. And so when we live on people's expectations, we may find ourselves isolated. But when we live on God's expectations, we might find ourselves elevated. And so when you live on others' suppositions about your life and who you are and where you are supposed to be, I caution you in listening to them. I ask you to listen to the voice of God. And so in reassessing myself, I, I, I originally thought of myself as Jonah because I thought I was running away from God. But I wasn't like Jonah. Jonah's a prophet. I, I'm not a prophet. <laughs> Jonah's a prophet. That's not me. Jonah has a book in the Bible. Not me. So I know I'm not Jonah, but at the beginning of my ministry, I thought I was because I seen myself running from the word. And so Jonah sat alongside a plant, a plant that God planted beside him. But before all this, Jonah before all this, before Jonah set aside this plant, there was something unique that happens. This is the story that we're familiar with. And then in chapter 1, we see that God sends Jonah to Nineveh. But Jonah says to God, or Jonah says, I'm not going to Nineveh. He decides to hop uh, on a boat. And he decides to get on this boat to go to a whole nother place. In fact, he's going to, to Tarshish uh, by way of Joppa. And while he's on this boat, the boat endures a dangerous storm. And while this boat endures a dangerous storm, the men upon the boat come upon a gentleman's agreement and they decide somebody's got to go. And they decide, Jonah, it is you. The reason why they decided it was Jonah's time is because he told them that he was running from God. And so they told Jonah, listen, you got to go because you are not supposed to be here. And in chapter 2, Jonah finds himself in the belly of a whale and he, and he does what we find ourselves all doing when we are hurt, when we are in pain, when we are going through something, when we have lost a loved one, when we have, uh, are enduring sickness, when we have lost our jobs, when we, when we are fighting illnesses, we find ourselves in prayer. And so almost for the complete chapter 2, you find Jonah in prayer. And so Jonah prays to God. And by the time he finishes his prayer, God speaks to the whale and he tells the whale to vomit jo Jonah up. And he vomits Jonah up and guess where Jonah's at? The very place that he was supposed to be in the first place. And so something happened here because oftentimes we find ourselves trying to look for a holy voice. For the, the, the parishioners at Inspiration Church, we look for Pastor Carlos, Pastor Jordan, Pastor Carlos Sr., Pastor Chris to give us this phenomenal word and help us out of this place. But sometimes you have unlikely heroes because the people that threw uh, Jonah over the, over the boat were the very people that told him he's not supposed to be here. And so they are also responsible for delivering him to where he was supposed to be. See, Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh because he did not think the people deserved the grace of God. Now, how many of us have felt like we don't deserve the grace of God? How many of us have been in a church or been a part of a religion that makes us feel like we don't deserve the grace of God? How many of us have fallen out of the grace of God? And we know it. But I am here to tell you that God has not abandoned you. And in fact, he has sent a messenger. And I'm not just talking about the messenger in Jonah that he sent to Nineveh. I'm talking about the messenger and his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came so that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. And so while Jonah is a great story to tell, Jesus Christ is the story we follow. This sermon is not as much about Jonah and the whale, but for me, it is about the plant, the plant that wasn't supposed to be there. 
It's about the people that feel unworthy. It's about the people that feel like they're not supposed to be here. About the people that feel ostracized by bougie believers. You can hashtag that one. There's some bougie believers out there. They have found God and they are just too good for anyone else. And Jonah is a bougie believer because the Bible says that we all have sinned. We all have fallen short the glory. But somehow Jonah is so pompous that he believes that the same grace that was extended to him through the storm, through the belly of the well, should not be extended to the very people that God is trying to deliver. Most sermons focus on Jonah in the well, but again, I want to look at Jonah and the plant because sometimes God plants a blessing before us that's not supposed to be there. Hmm. A blessing that's not supposed to be there. But we're smart enough, we're intelligent enough to know that when God gives us a blessing, we're going to take full advantage of that blessing. And when we get that blessing, we're going to say, thank you, God, for that blessing. But that same grace is what we are supposed to extend to others. That same gratitude that you have when God blesses you is who and what you are supposed to expend, extend to others. So I relay this message here on our pastor's 10-year anniversary on his 35th, 35th birthday on our three-year anniversary. Because when he asked me into ministry, like Jonah, I was running. But unfortunately, I was in Nineveh. Now, I'm not saying I was a bad person. I just like to party a lot. But I'm grateful to Pastor because he looked at me and he said, you're not supposed to be here. He looked at me like that plant that I seen driving to Austin in the middle of a field around cows and horses and hay. What is that palm tree doing in the middle of that field? And I can't help but answer that by saying the planter planted it there. And so it was, was where it was supposed to be. And so for those of us that feel like Ninevites, that feel like, you know what, the, the, the gospel has escaped me. The gospel doesn't want me. The gospel uh, uh, isn't after me. The gospel isn't for me. God is saying this gospel is for you. God is saying come to me all you who are burdened and heavy laden. My uncle who's a pastor Marvin Delaney said some profound words at my grandfather's funeral and he said if you're not for the people you can't come with us. God said Jonah you are worried about a plant but I am worried about my people. When I am called into ministry, Pastor Carlos said, Chris, you have a ministry for people. It wasn't that, hey, Chris, you talk well. Hey, Pastor Chris, you, you look nice. No, you got a ministry for people. And so as I get into this ministry, I understand what this ministry for people is like. Because you have to carry other people's burdens. You have to hear other people's toils. And your wife has to hear other people's toils. Your children have to be around that very same energy. And guess what? We hear for the people. And so if that's what it's about, then that's what we do. And so if you are encouraged to get into ministry in any way, you should be encouraged to get in for the people. Because when we looked at the book of Acts last month and we talked about Simon the sorcerer, Simon was amazed by all of the work that was being done at that time. And he said, I want to be a part of this ministry. But guess what? He wanted to do all of the sorcery. But the disciples looked at him and said, if you are in this for the wrong reason, your heart is not in the right place. You are cursed. Ooh, I'm not preaching to you. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. So when I look 
back on all my life and everything that I've been through. You're just insane. You're not supposed to be here. But I serve a God that says, Chris, I expect you to be somewhere else. I serve a God that comes to a pastor, uh, Pastor Carlos Jones, and says, I know where you should be. I serve a God that says, I see the best in you. I see the best in you. If you're out there right now, God is looking at you right now and he's saying, I see the best in you. He looked at me and said, Chris, I know you like to party, but I see better than that. Chris, I know you like to drink, but I see better than that. Chris, I know you like to turn up, but I see better than that. Chris, I know you like to stand up on the table and be the sort and be the, the center of attention, but I see better than that for you. God said, I see the best in you because you are not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be here. So I can sing the song when, when he says, You saw the best in me When everyone else around Could only see the worst Worst in me Come on, sing it. Come on now. You don't have to sing if you're watching this. He said, He saw the best in me When everyone else around Could only see the worst in me mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he says, He's mine. Yes. I'm his. It doesn't matter. What I did, cause he only sees me for who I am. Who I am. Cause he saw the best in me. Best in me. When everyone else around could only see the worst in me. Come on. God sees the best in you this morning. If you're live this morning, I want you to type what God is calling you to do this morning. What God is wanting you to do this morning. If you're share, if you're viewing this message and you know it's for somebody, you know that God needs to pull out the best in them, that they are not where they are supposed to be. I encourage you to share this message. I encourage you, you to tell them that God can see the best in you. Everyone else around you may be telling you you're not supposed to be here. But God is telling you supposed to be here, but I got another place I expect you to be. So we'll go out in prayer this evening. We just want to say, dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the journey. We thank you for the boat rides, for the storms, for the trips the misguidance, the missteps, the hurt, the pain, the joy, the celebration, the angst, the anger, the worries that has brought us to where we are at right now. And Father God, for those of us that question our lives, that question where we should be, where God should place us, where we're supposed to be in our lives, Father God, we know that this is the message that is calling us to purpose. We know you see the best in us, God. We ask that you allow that to come out of us, Father God. We, uh, we ask that for our children, Father God, that we want better for, Father God, that they see the best in themselves, Father God. You bring them forward to your kingdom. Father, your word says in my Father's house there's many mansions. So there's room for everyone here. When you come into the Father's house, you are where you're supposed to be. You will get out the best in yourself because you will be getting the best of an omnipotent God. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. And we hope this word blesses those who are open to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
saw the best in me when everyone else around well, hey listen guys I have three quick appeals for you you just heard Pastor Chris do an amazing message giving the message about Jonah and maybe you've been running from Christ maybe you've been running from salvation maybe you grew up in church but you haven't quite received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior Right now, I want to tell you today is the time to stop running. If you've never received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and right now the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart, I want to encourage you to pray this simple prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner, and I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die upon the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I ask you, to help me live my life worthy to the calling. I believe it. I receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, listen, if you just prayed that simple prayer by faith, the Holy Spirit has just put a down payment for you that you would enter the kingdom of heaven. Hey, listen, I have two very vital and very important appeals for you today. The second appeal is for rededication maybe you've been running away maybe you've been falling by the wayside maybe there's some things in your life that have turned out to be not what you know is according to the word of God hey listen right now is the perfect time for you to rededicate your life it's never too late you're exactly where you be where you need to be right now so that you may find God and grope with him and so if that's you I want to pray for you dear Heavenly Father right now I just come praying for anyone who has fell by the wayside anyone who has went contrary to what we know to do, Father. I just pray right now, Father, for rededication, that, that they would rededicate their lives to you, confess their sins, and I thank you, Father, that you'll wash them clean. And so, Father, right now, as they make the conscious decision to repent, to turn away and have a change of mind, I thank you that you're moving even right now. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And guys, here's our third appeal for church membership. Hey, listen, if you're not connected to a church, you need to be connected. It's very important for you to be connected to a church. Here at Inspiration Church, our mantra and our motto is to love, live, and lead. And if you want to be a part of our mission and what we're doing, just type in connect right where you are, and someone from our connect team will connect with you. Whatever appeal you chose today, we mix our faith with you, and we believe that by faith God has answered that prayer. Come on, if you believe that, say amen. Hey, listen, guys, as you go throughout your week, always remember to love live and lead hey guys we have had a phenomenal time today here at inspiration church are you ready to get the curse off of your household well guess what you can break it it's offering time right now it's offering time it's yoke breaking time it's curse breaking time it's a time for you to be able to sow to get your finances lined up to be able to 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 increase in, in what God is giving you so that you can be a blessing to others if you if you want to be a blessing say I want to be a blessing to others and whether you're broke or whether you're a billionaire you can be a blessing and right now is the time for you to sow. Here at Inspiration Church, we teach the principle of tithing. We don't think that it's an Old Testament principle that we've, we've done away with. No, we believe that it's, it's true. God says that if you, if you give, you shall receive. If you sow, you shall reap a harvest. He says if you dig up dirt and you put an apple tree, apple seed into the ground, you will grow an apple tree. And so his principles are true. His power is real. And I want to make it real in your life. Don't believe the enemy. Because the enemy will say, you know, I got to keep my little coins. This pandemic, pandemic, I gotta, I gotta make sure that I've, I've got enough for myself. My, you know, I got kids now. I got, I got things that I have. That's the enemy's way of saying you have to provide for yourself. God is saying that if you just be uh, faithful over the few things, I'll make you ruler over many. If you be faithful over the ten percent, I'll make you manager and ruler over the ninety, and the ninety will grow, and you continue to give the ten percent back. I've been tithing all of my life, and every year I get an increase, and it's not from the church. God has started businesses he started other things but my family is faithful i'm not one of the pastors that talks about tithing and, and just giving it and taking no, no 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 i do it and my life has been blessed and i've been able to be a blessing to the people around me ask anybody that's been around me yell yeah, never say that pastor carlos jones is stingy why because god taught me how to give to him and if you can give to somebody that's invisible somebody that you can't see then it's easier to give to people that you see around you i know that i'm not 
depending upon my job. I'm not dependent upon the church. I'm not dependent upon Turo. I'm not dependent upon book sales. All of those things are avenues for finances to come through. But I believe that God is always going to supply all of my needs. Wants, desires, add that into the scripture. According to his bank account. According to his wealth. According to his gold. According to, to his diamonds. According to his worth. And I believe it. And I believe it's time for you to be able to say, God, I'm going to trust you in this area. And as you decide to trust God, we'll watch. Trees, plants, forests, greenery of God's blessing in your life. I pray that he gives you health. I pray that he gives you wealth. I pray that he nourishes your spirit. I pray that he nourishes your soul. And I pray that you remember the seed that you sowed today. That when God does a new thing in your life, you'll say it was because of his grace and my obedience that God was able to do a great thing. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the sower. Your word says, I give seed to the sower. I don't give seed to the, uh, to, the, to the borrower. I don't give seed to the one who steals. I give seed to the sower. That means that I give resources to those that give. And so, Father, I thank you for the givers that you're grooming. Father, I thank you for the first-time givers, God. I thank you, Lord, for the givers that don't even know that they're supposed to be given. This, this may be a seed planted in their hearts, Father. You said one seed, one waters, God, but only one person, one person, that's you, can give the increase. So, Father, I love you and I thank you. I thank you for the blessings. Increase your kingdom that homes may be blessed. Pour out a blessing we don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your seed. Thank you for your blessing. And I can't wait to see what God does in your life. I love you guys. And remember to LLL, that's love, live, and lead. Peace. What an incredible word from Pastor Chris. I am just always so blessed to hear the messages that he brings. And if you guys don't know, Pastor Chris brings the youth messages also. So that is one way to always hear what God is speaking through him and giving to the youth. And, hey, this week we were honored with him bringing the word to us. So great job, Pastor Chris. Great job, Pastor Chris. <laughs> okay, right now you can go to our social media and you can follow us on all our social media. We have YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And also, while you're on the internet, you can check out our website, which is www.yourinspirationnow.com. On there, you can find iGroups to join, and you can also find church merch to purchase. Absolutely. So wear your church merch to your iGroup meetings. Stay connected. And if you did not know, Inspiration Church is about to celebrate three years, guys. Three years. three years. I am so super excited. I am just so blessed to be a part of this ministry. I just want to thank Pastor Carlos for having the vision, for going forth and moving in the direction that God gave him. And definitely, it has been a joy to walk alongside you in ministry. So, Thank you to everybody who has served, who's been a part, who's joined us, who's given, who's donated, anything you've ever done to support Inspiration Church. We thank you. I acknowledge you today. And we just want to say, let's get ready to move forward in what God has for us in the future. All right, guys, so it's time for us to head out. But before we leave, I just want to say a quick prayer for you guys. And we want to thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you on our social media platforms. We hope that you'll check out past sermons on our YouTube channel, and we hope that you have a blessed week. Bow your head. Let's bow. Dear God, we just thank you so much for allowing us to fellowship with you once again. Even though we're not face-to-face, -face, Lord, we just thank you for the connection that we can feel through the screen, God. And I just pray over everyone's week. I pray over this message, Lord. I pray that it touches every soul that um, has joined us today on throughout our service, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you so much for um, every all the blessings Lord Jesus and everything that you have pushed us through Lord throughout this time and we thank you for everything that's going to come in Jesus name amen amen all right guys I have had an amazing time worshiping with you today and there's one thing that we always want you to remember before we head out every single week and that is love, to love live, live and lead. lead see you next week Bye.